back to James's Repair Shop. Got a little project on the go today. I have the front left fender from the convertible hardtop, a convertible Thunderbird, sorry. And uh, this fender has a couple of coats of paint on it. It's not, it wasn't as bad as the convertible where it had like five coats. This fender was obviously put on the car somewhere between paint jobs or whenever, because there's gold paint and then there's um, the red paint. So the final coat that was on this car was red. So anyway, what I have is some uh, clean strip, uh, premium sprayable stripper. I've never used this stuff before. We can't get any kind of a uh, paint stripper here that works. I think that's fairly common in most places around is where these paint strippers are, are hard to get that work really well. Though I, I see some aircraft strippers that they're now by clean strip that work well. But I bought this about a year ago when I was in the US because you just, like I said, you can't get this stuff up here. So I picked up a can, I was down in Montana, picked up a can of it and I've been waiting to use it on this. So here we are today, it's not, a, it's not in direct sunlight. It's not super hot out, though even though I'm sweating right now, but it is warm, but not super hot. So we should be able to do this reasonably easy or at least test to make sure it works all right. So let's have a look at what we have here and what we're starting with and we'll, uh, we'll get into this. All right, so we got the clean stripper right here. And that's the stuff I'm gonna be using. I've got a Princess Auto uh, spray bottle. I, hopefully it still works because it has been giving me some issues. And now uh, there's been recommendations that you would uh, take and, and give it a, a sanding first to help uh, the chemical get into the, the old paint. So I have my sander there and uh, we'll set up and we'll see what we can do with this thing. So let's put a little bit of uh, this, this clean strip sprayable stripper in the, in the spray bottle. Hopefully I can pour this without too much trouble. Hold on, I'm gonna grab a, a funnel. There we go, a little funnel will help a little bit. So, okay, I gotta shake it first because it says, the following instructions says shake well first. So I hadn't shaken it. All right, that's a pretty good shake. Doesn't say how long to shake it. Oh, these safety caps. Oh man, they drive me nuts. All right, let's put a little in here. So just remember, this is the sprayable stuff. I put enough so it actually picks it up on the spray bottle. And you can brush it on, but I wanted to try the spray part of it. Hopefully it doesn't melt my uh, spray bottle down. So far the funnel's holding up. <laughs> All right. Set that aside a little bit. Oh, see smelly stuff. All right, let's see if this will spray. I'm gonna try it on the, eh. there she goes, yeah, she'll spray. All right, so let me get you focused in a little better. And I'm gonna get a mask on. Actually, you were focused in pretty good right there now. All right, so I'm gonna put a mask on. You know, I don't wanna breathe this stuff anymore and I have to. So let's see what we can do here. I'm gonna give it a rub first. We'll set this aside.
There it goes. That's better. I'm just doing the sea feather area. It says to spray it on liberally. Good liberal coat. There. Let's see how it looks. I gave it a good liberal coat. Uh, sorry if you couldn't hear me very well. Let's see how it's uh, working out here. Now there is some uh, talk that you could, a fella could uh, cover it up with some uh, plastic would help, but it's not in direct sunlight, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I want you guys to see how it, it's working. Everyone, this has been sitting for a while. I did take a scrape through and I sprayed it down a couple times. I think it's been sitting for about three quarters of an hour. I was trying to do a time lapse on it, but every time I came out back out to check on it, the uh, camera was shut off. But anyway, I ended up using, let's see, about a hundred milliliters of uh, stripper, which isn't much considering when you do the, the gel form, you just dump on a whole bunch and go. So let's see what, let's see how much will come off of this thing. down to the red oxide primer and uh, on this section right here so I'm gonna give it another spray and see how well it does I'm not gonna try to video it this time it seems my time-lapse whatever I'm doing wrong uh, is not working it only goes for a short time and then it picks up again or I have to come out and restart it now I am using a brand new gimbal I'm getting used to it. it's a DGI DJI gimbal uh, new to me, so I'm still figuring it out. But anyway, we'll get some footage somehow out of this. So let's give it another spray. And see if it gets rid of the red oxide. Now, it did good on the, uh, on the red paint, really well on the red paint. Uh, pretty good on the gold paint as well. But the red oxide, uh, my experience with it, it's a little different beast. To work with so let's give this a good going over again I hardly have used any of what I put in there so so far uh, as far as cost to use is pretty cheap I forget what I paid for this it doesn't matter prices have all gone up since since I bought this stuff but I'm curious to see how well it takes off the red oxide now this would be good in a door jam because it's not running off like it it, it goes on and it, and it sticks to the to the paint quite well like it's not pouring off like you would think it would for a sprayable product because that's what I was worried about is that well if I spray it on something it's just going to pour off but no it's it, it's liquid enough but it just kind of hangs in there so and I haven't been putting plastic over so let's try it this way and we'll come back in uh, another hour and see how that looks now it doesn't seem to be working very well on the red oxide primer which I suspected would be the case it does take it off some but um, not spectacularly but it is working well on what's left of the gold paint and stuff like that so any of the the uh, automotive enamel paints or acrylics whatever these are this would have been lacquer probably at one time lacquer paint but it's taking it right off you can see up here yeah no problem at all I mean that stuff uh, works actually works pretty good a little tough on this corner here I'll put a little bit more on maybe after but anyway this is just a test but as far as the red oxide it is getting into it but the red oxide is a different uh, makeup than automotive paint you can see it's not biting, it's not really taking it off the way 
you'd want. So if you have red oxide primer underneath, you're gonna to have to do something else with it. But uh, just for taking the uh, actual automotive paint off, it does a pretty darn good job. So we got that all done. Um, what it recommends is to uh, kind of clean it off with some mineral spirits or wash it with water. So I'm just, I have some uh, Varsol in this container here. So let's see how it neutralizes that stuff. If it does any good at all. Yeah, it does pretty good. Just using a, an old rag around here. Yeah. So that's the recommended uh, cleaning process of, uh, that's on the container. I think you could just use soap and water because it just said use water or to wash it down or use mineral spirits. And uh, I'm using choosing to use mineral spirits. But as you can see, it hasn't done anything with really much with the uh, with the black ox or the red oxide primer. So that's going to take a little bit more. There's a little bit of gold paint left here. It's probably soft. I just ever got in and dug it out. Yeah, it's soft. Look. Oh, right there. It's coming off. I just never got in there and hogged it out. But it, it is definitely easy to get out. Look at that. So yeah, that stuff is pretty good. Pretty good. Cleans up pretty good. There. There, I'm quite happy with it. Up here's a little bit more. Again, this stuff is uh, is soft. It softened it up quite a bit. Doesn't take much to get it off. Anyway, I'll continue tinkering with that. But now, the black, the red oxide primer. <clears throat> well, you can leave it on. Really, it's a good, it's a really good, uh, especially on these old, uh, these old cars. Like, I mean, that's a good starting point if you want to just give it a scuffing and go. Though I noticed that it, it may have a couple of layers. Like, there's some white actually in there. <laughs> Maybe this was white at one time. Who knows, who knows. Yeah, there's some, no, oh, that's, that's, uh, that's actually filler. Someone had, there must've been a little dent in that fender. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Now, the red oxide, like I was saying, back to the red oxide, got distracted there for a minute. Now, like I said, you can leave it like that. It actually looks pretty good for a good starting point. Let it all so harden up again because that uh, stuff softened everything. Continue to clean up, give it a sanding. That's not bad. I think we got your starting with a, a primered fender again. They must have damaged it there. Yeah, I think so. That's why this is all that red oxide has gone off of here because it was damaged and uh, yeah, you can feel it right there. So that'll have to be refixed. So would I recommend this stuff if you can get it? Because we can't get it here, but if you can get it, I'd say yes. Uh, the sprayable, sprayable part to me was really handy. Um, it didn't run off like, uh, you know, you pour the stuff on that, that thick stuff, it gobs all over the place, it's running off the edges. This stuff you sprayed it on and used very little of it either, or also. Like I think I only put in what I say 300 milliliters, and I used up pretty much all of it on the on the four coats that I gave it. But I didn't use any plastic. I just did it natural, but it's not in the sunlight. Anyway, uh, I'm not paid to say this or anything, but I would buy this again if I could find it for sale. Anyway, thanks a lot, everyone. That's the stripping at Jameson's Repair Shop today. <laughs> Thanks a lot, we'll see you in the next one.